Hi everybody, this is Hero, and welcome to another Dragonflight video. We are taking a look at Healers for Mythic Plus, and this is your tier list for Season 1. Now, just as a caveat, all tier lists are projections of what we think are going to be the best specs for this type of content. So if your spec is not up a, a rung or down a rung, don't worry about it. These are just my takeaways from testing, from looking at across the community, from evaluating logs and dungeon environments, and seeing the different playstyles and tools that they bring to bear. And it's also based on present tuning, which may go up or down. So just be aware. The main takeaway is play Resto Druid or play Evoker. That's it. These two classes are amazing, and we're going to get into it and talk about why they're the best and why the others are slightly worse overall. But here's your tier list. Let's start with our S tier classes. So Druid and Evoker are interesting because they have really great damage and good tuning, and they have all of the throughput tools and utility that you would want in a healer. You have burst options with things like Convoke. You have great single target DRs like Iron Bark and Time Dilation. You have amazing personal DRs, which is essential for healers to be able to take care of themselves with something off the GCD that is specifically a DR in high Mythic Plus content. You must be able to take care of yourself. And some classes, whether they're DPS or healers, are gonna struggle with this outside of big CDs, and they are gonna rely on um, expert mechanical use to stay out of trouble. This just doesn't work when you get to huge rot damage or a big pulse of AoE from a boss and these sorts of things where you just must be able to weather the storm. And without these kinds of DRs, other healers are gonna struggle a little bit more. But Obsidian Scales is completely busted and bark skin is just amazing if we just take a look over here um, you can see improved bark skin giving you duration um, you've got a whole range of really cool options as a dr bot for druid things like iron bark and improved iron bark guys look at this ability it's crazy, a one minute CD, 20% DR on anybody. This is this is insane stuff for High Mythic Plus. You also for Druid have great DPS options to help fill things out. Adaptive Swarm Guys is insanely good in Mythic Plus. This just keeps on bouncing with Unbridled Swarm. It produces a lot of throughput, both on the damage side because you get an amp and also on the healing side. And then there's just so much flexibility within the tree for your resto druids to deal with different kinds of content um you know swift men stuff you've got tree of life stuff if you need it um yeah i i really love where resto druid is at and its damage is so good as a especially as a kitty you can move back and forth between forms produce a lot of dots and then heal you can convoke out of those moments um yeah, very, very smooth and lots of cool things going on. Same is kind of true for Evoker. So Evoker's gameplay is slightly based on tuning, by which I mean that it does have these awkward moments of being uh, like a caster where it's doing a big breath attack or you're trying to load up a Spirit Bloom or something like that. But it still has all of the great tools that we want out of a healer. Um, Things like Rewind and things like Tip the Scales, things like Obsidian Scales. Guys, look at this. Look at Obsidian Bulwark. Two charges on a 30% personal DR. Oh, it's just insane. Like, so good for sustained uh, damage reduction for this class. Really fun to play. It also has amazing damage. Just big burst breaths. Um, lots of cool options for dealing with incoming damage, a lot of preventative stuff that you can do, a lot of reactive stuff that you can do, um, plus you have all kinds of movement opportunities, you can go and snatch people and move them away, you can do tail swipes, you can do oppressive roar, um, yeah, there's so many, so many cool extra pieces of utility that are coming to the evoker class, it's basically 
I think very, very close to Druid, unless the tuning gets adjusted or changed, these two specs are the ones that you want to look at. So yeah, if you need AOE CCs, stuns, pushing and pulling, roars and spirals, if you need things like moving your allies around, convoke and rewind, staples, um, I, it doesn't really get better than this class or these two classes. And I think Resto Druid currently has the edge in my mind, partly because Evoker is a bit new and you do have to do some casted spells. But nevertheless, that is your look at the top two. Let's take a look at our A tier, which is our Disc Priest, which I'll log on now, and our Holy Paladin. So Disc and Holy are in a unique situation of being right on the cusp of S tier in their damage. It's likely just a tuning issue that is holding them back from performing at the level of Resto Druid. Holy Paladin, I think, probably a little bit more than Disc, suffers in having to make GCD choices for damage and having to build a resource and depend on holy power spending to manage health bars in their triage. But they're both just excellent guys. Um, you get a lot of, as we know, we've come to love and see from Disc and Holy Paladin, you get a lot of passive damage through dots, whether it's Purge the Wicked or just your general dots. You have um, Penance damage, which is not insignificant. There's really good DR opportunities through Sack, and um, you also get good DR from Pain Suppression. You've got lots of prep work like Rapture that you can use. You have cool things like Light's Wrath to burst up health. Same is true for Penance. It, it really feels like you can uh, push health bars around with Penance, in my view. Um, but yeah, you got lots of the other utility too, like you get a PI, you get feathers, um, you've got access to bubble if you want, you know, your power barrier. Lots of good utility that will be useful in a Mythic Plus. It's just some of it is positional, some of it takes a little bit more setup, and some of it doesn't uh, rise to the level of the tuning of your Resto Druid or your Evoker. Paladin may also, depending on how Blessing of Summer works out in the meta, might also rise up to S tier if you can combine it with some classes that really take advantage of this special tool. So we have here porting in from Shadowlands the whole Blessing situation. Um, they also can maybe get more damage out of certain things like Recompense, though I think this is probably low value in Mythic Plus on the whole. Um, but yeah, Melee Paladin, guys, is probably going to pump pretty good. You just have to focus more attention on it than Resto Druid. Resto Druid, you can just throw Wild Growth up. You can have Convoke in your pocket. You can go, you can put up a couple of dots and go Kitty Form and just do damage until you need to react. And then, boom, jump out, Convoke, uh, you know, fire a few more Rejuves out, do another Wild Growth, and back you go. And you can let that stuff tick in the background. Whereas Paladin... You need to prep a little bit more. You need to be aware that you can't react as quickly. Maybe you take Virtue and that gives you a little more flexibility, meaning uh, you can do a huge moment of triage with Virtue. But I, I got to say that when you get to the higher Mythic Plus stuff, Beacon of Faith uh, just almost becomes mandatory because it gives you two people that you're going to be able to take care of at all times. And then you can manage the triage for other people's CDs, calling for a Rogue's Cloak calling for alter time, these sorts of things. Um, Paladin is fun to play. I just think the number tuning is not quite uh, there, but we'll see. Hopefully they do a little bit more tuning overall. Now let's head to our B tier healers, which is our Holy Priest and our Mistweaver Monk. So again, these classes are going to perform fine in a Dragonflight. There's no reason they can't, you know, push keys as well. It's just that they're not going to be probably the top meta choice for shoving the highest keys. They're going to struggle a little more than the other two. Um, they have really good sustained throughput. So on some of the fights, like if you do uh, Ner'zhul, where you have a ton of rock damage in that dungeon on beta, maybe it's over tune, I don't know, but you can punch out 40, 50k HPS sustained for two, three minutes. I think I saw some streamers doing it for even longer. So they have great throughput, especially like sustained throughput. So any of the rot 
affix weeks, um, you'll see these classes will be quite good. However, I think there's a couple of issues in maybe two different directions. One is that Mistweaver is kind of positionally focused, and that largely um, goes around Feyline, and Holy Priest requires actually a lot more haste than we're used to to function in Mythic Plus. And what I mean by that is you just will not be able to get your casts out, whether you're doing you know, flash healing stuff or you're trying to do damage especially. So if we're trying to smite and get out some kind of damage, you just will not have the GCDs available to move back and forth between healing and casting for damage if you don't have enough haste. So um, other than that, Holy Priest is awesome. The new work that they're giving them with the... Uh, what, where's the CD here? Uh, Miracle, not Miracle Worker, the one where we get Imperial Blaze. Here it is. This is one of the coolest abilities. It gives us essentially a CD for Holy Fire. That allows us to pour out damage, but it is focusing a lot of GCDs on Holy Fire casts. They have nerfed it um, in the last week, I think, from 30 second CD to one minute, because I guess it was doing too much. But guys, Holy Priest has all the tools that you need to push... Um, HPS, it's just going to struggle a little bit to contribute on the damage side. I still think it's a pretty fun spec to play. It's a little bit behind. I mean, I've always liked Disc, but you get good things like Guardian Spirit. You get things like uh, Miracle Worker now, which is just awesome for Mythic Plus Dungeons. You can take Apotheosis and mix that together with that. And, and you get... Now look at what Apotheosis gives us. It actually gives us a charge, um, which is awesome. So... Lots to be happy about if you're a Holy Priest. It's just likely not going to quite cut it. When you get more haste, come back to it and you'll see that it's uh, somewhat reasonable. Now, Monks. My main concern with Monks is Feline uh, Stomp. And one of the problems with Monks is you have to you have to sort of load up your healing around Feline Stomp. I'll just put Feline Stomp on the screen so you can see what I'm talking about. So Feline Stomp is giving you access to a huge buff. Um, you get to punch out a little bit of healing and you can reset this, but it is a ground effect and it kind of goes out in a cone. And it also, um, you know, is kind of finicky. You, you might want to hold uh, your Chi burst in order to proc it so you you wait on chi burst you're in melee you're doing spinning crane kick and rising suns you're you know you're waiting for things to happen you're loading up some healing in the background with renewing mist and then uh everybody moves so you move you fire off a chi burst and you fail line and then it gives you usually your your fail line stomp back so waiting and holding fail line stomp seems to be the main gameplay stuff to think about in a mythic plus setting uh, for Mistweaver monks, and it makes it just a little bit awkward. Mistweaver's got lots of amazing tools, just like Windwalker. It's got like essential tools. Ring of Peace for is insane, right? It's got good um, CD stuff like Cocoon. It's got amazing burst recovery and revival, um, and it, its damage is okay. Like, I mean, to be honest, they could buff spinning crane kick a little bit. Please, please buff spinning pretty. <laughs> Sprinting Spain Crick. Ah, can't even talk. Bop their AoE damage. I'd love it, but it's there. Like, the tools are there. It's just, it's kind of awkward because you're also in melee, and um, if you want to do the melee monk stuff, you're punished for being out of melee, right? You don't get to Rising Sun Kick to extend things. You have the awkwardness of trying to reposition Feline Stomp. I think I've made my point here, but... I'm excited um, to see how Monk does. Again, its its throughput is almost better than Holy Priest on a sustained sort of encounter. So if we have Insane Rot, maybe it gets uh, better. I'm hoping it does. And then um, we have at the very bottom, our Resto Shaman. And I want to take a minute or two to talk about this because Resto Shaman... Um, is actually one of my favorite healers to play, especially in Mythic Plus. Do you guys remember old Rocky? Rocky was insane. Um, really fun stuff with Kyrian as well. You could burst tons of damage. That's kind of going away. And unfortunately, in its place, 
we don't really have the kind of passive damage due to tuning that we have access to as a Resto Druid or Evoker, even as a Paladin or Disc Priest. So Resto Druid really has to work for its damage. You still have access to a lot of really good tools, guys. You have your Spirit Link Totem, which is insane. You have uh, all of the cool utility like Stone Skin, which maybe won't be as valuable, sort of positionally awkward, but you have things like Tremor Totem, which is, again, just a unique effect. Poison Cleansing Totem, a completely unique effect in the game. You don't have an AoE Poison Cleanse. Um, Acid Rain, which is coming into the game and needs a substantial buff, in my view, to make Resto Druids really get the oomph out of healing rain on targets. I don't think we need this to be Torghast levels of damage. Um, if you've ever done Torghast Resto Shaman, it was the easiest way to complete Torghast. You just throw down, you get that power and toss down healing rains and completely annihilate mobs. But it should be really a good payoff. If you want to give Resto Shaman some passive damage, it should be in the form of a buffed Acid Rain. Also, like, look, their Lava Burst Chain Lightning stuff is okay, but it's costly in the wrong sort of way for a healer. What do I mean by that? Well, they have to cast. You have to cast Chain Heals. You have to cast Healing Surge. This is a problem for all Mythic Plus content. What if you can't? What if you've got to move out of a mechanic? And there's a lot of ground effect mechanics coming in the new dungeons, like big AoE swirlies that you have to get out of. Well, someone's going to die, right? You've got Spearwalker's Grace, but you're going to run out of time. Um, the other major problem for Resto Shaman is currently their DR situation. So if you take a look, we do have access to Astral Shift, which is a one and a half minute CD. It's 40%, so it's at the high mark for a personal DR. And we can get some uh, reduction to put it at one minute and increase the duration. However, that's all we got. That's our personal DR. So Planes Traveler is, is reasonable. I mean, Astral Bulwark, if it's a certain kind of dungeon, that's a lot of personal DR, but it's just this one button that we have access to. And that's a little concerning, right? You get a bit of health if you want Earth Elemental. It's not that substantial. Earth Shield, I don't find to be, well, it's not really something we want on ourselves if we have Water Shield, but the, the, the thing about Shaman is, where's the, where's the tankiness? Where's it coming from? I don't know. That's, that's it. So you pick a moment, and the problem is, if you're a Druid, you can still run and cast, if you're a shaman, maybe maybe you have to take uh, ghost wolf stuff and just stay in ghost wolf form. But if uh, if you're a shaman, you need to get a cast off, and you don't have access to spirit walker's grace. You can't move out of the way, um, and it's a long cast you're trying to get off to to heal everyone up. It's not the same as a druid being able to move around freely, have his have his uh, bark up, and then just be casting rejuves or convoking while moving through the space. After your astral shift is done, you're in you're in big trouble. So, what do, what do we need? We need more damage for Resto Shaman, like a big buff to damage. I think Acid Rain has to go up by like 50%. Our Chain Lightning damage needs to go up substantially, maybe 25-30% buff to Chain Lightning. The rest of the toolkit for Resto feels pretty good. I don't mind playing with Astral Shift and working with that limitation of being a caster in a dungeon, but you gotta give me something, Blizzard. Resto Shaman need more in order to rise up and be at the top of these ranks. So, if you give them more damage, they're there. And the same is somewhat true for um, access to S tier for your Disc Priest and your Paladin. I think Holy Priest and Mistweaver are gonna struggle either way because like Resto Shaman, they they have to, they don't, well, excuse me, Resto Shaman has some passive access, so you get free Lava Bursts if you're Flame Shocking. It's just Chain Lightning, it's a little awkward. But for Holy Priest and Mistweaver, it's kind of rotational stuff that you have to make a choice on. Your Spinning Crane Kick and your Rising Sun Kick and your Smites, these are all things that are taking up moments when you could be healing. So I don't know if just buffing their damage is going to really accelerate them. But either way, this is the main takeaway for me. Play Resto Druid. 
and play evoker they're completely bonkers right now across the board for utility damage and hps they're also a lot of fun but all these healers can do the content this is what i think is gonna be able to push the highest keys thanks very much for tuning in for this one guys let me know what you think in the comments and we'll see you again next time